we are deep in winter, which means the days are cooler, shorter, and there is less sun, and our plants are feeling the effects of that. In today's video, I wanna share with you some tips and tricks on how to keep your plants thriving and happy throughout the winter season. Now, of course, winter is such a challenging time for our houseplants because there is less sun, the days are shorter, it's cooler, we are heating our spaces, which our plants don't love. And sometimes it's really hard to go through this process of overwintering your plants, especially, especially if you have a lot of plants. I'm sure most of you have been through this process. You've probably lost some plants. You probably didn't know what to do with some plants. I know for me, whenever winter hits, I am Ooh, I am praying that nobody dies because winter time is always so hard. I live in a city that's surrounded by three rivers. There's always a fake fog and it just makes my life difficult. But I did find ways to combat that and actually make my plants survive and even thrive throughout the winter. So first things first and probably the most important things your plants need is light. Now there is obviously a very very limited amount of sunlight in the winter months. Our plants suffer because light is like food for them. It's literally what they need to thrive, it's what they need to grow, it's what they need to make nutrients for themselves. So when they're deprived of light they really take a big big hit. However, there are things you can do in order to make life for them a little bit easier. And the first thing is just moving them a little bit closer to a window or any other source of natural light. Personally, my favorite way to provide my plants with the light they need are grow lights. I freaking love grow lights. I use so many grow lights. I have at least like 20 grow lights. I use all kinds of different brands. And honestly, let me tell you, let me tell you. Okay, I'm just real talk over here. They all do the same thing. They all do the same thing. So do not worry about having the best grow lights. I mean, of course, there are some that are better than others, but most of them will do the job. Most of them will do the job. So do not worry too much about spending big bucks on like really expensive high class grow lights. They are nice. They are very nice, but you don't need them. If you're looking for a recommendation for a really good grow light brand that is not too expensive, I definitely recommend Sansi. I have a lot of Sansi lights in my setup. They work great. If you're looking for something a little bit more expensive, I have three of the Mother Life Spectrum Grow Lights and those also work great, but they are very pricey. But I also have a lot of cheap Amazon Grow Lights that work just fine. As long as you keep your Grow Lights on for 10 to 12 hours per day, your plants will be fine. Now remember, dirty windows can actually block the sunlight. So make sure to actually give those windows a good old clean. I know you haven't cleaned them in a long while, have you? Mm? I know you didn't. I'm looking at you. I'm guilty too. Now something that is very, very closely related to light is growth and is watering. Because the more light the plant gets, the more energy it uses, and therefore it needs more water. So that brings us to our next point. Watering. Na, 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 na. I think watering is pretty much a very hard topic like throughout the whole year because it's so easy to overwater your plants. It's so easy to underwater your plants and it takes some time and it takes some experimenting to find the actual right balance for each plant. And during the winter, that can get even more trickier because you're used to a certain regimen during the summer where your plants need at least weekly, sometimes even twice a week, water. And during the winter, that number significantly drops. I tend to water most of my plants during the winter, maybe once every second week or so. However, since I do have a lot of my plants under grow lights, they actually continue to grow pretty much the same all year round because their lighting conditions don't really change. So I continue to water those regularly. Now it is so important to watch out for watering mistakes during the winter because in summer, if you overwater a plant, it usually isn't a big deal because it dries out pretty fast. But in winter, the soil dries out much, much slower and wet plus cold is a deadly combination for your plants. It'll cause root rot, 
and it will cause you to cry. So please watch out for watering mistakes. This is a practice you should do throughout the year, but particularly in the winter time, check your soil. Check your soil before you water your plants. Stick your little phalanges in there. See if it's dry, if it's wet, or if you're feeling even an inkling of moisture in there. Just hold on for a day or two and then water it. It's always better to err on the side of underwatering and giving it a little bit less water than overwatering and potentially causing a lot of problems for you down the road. On the topic of watering, I would also recommend you water your plants with lukewarm water. The cold water straight from our pipes can be pretty cold during the winter months and that can really shock your roots. So test the water before you water it, put it on a lukewarm, not too hot. You don't want to burn the roots. You just want it to be like, you know, gently tempered. You want it to be nice and gentle. One of the biggest struggles that I deal with throughout winter is humidity. Because obviously we grow mostly tropical plants and those tropical plants love their moisture. They love their 90 plus percent humidity. And of course we cannot replicate that within our houses because that will cause a lot of problems. You can, however, grow your plants in greenhouses. That is always an option or like in cabinets or in tents. I use none of that because personally, for me personally, I don't like, I am very much a out of sight, out of mind kind of person. So if something requires me to open a door, get the plant out, water it, put it back, close the door, that's too many steps for me. That is too many freaking steps for me. I take the path of least resistance. I just boop boop put it back on the shelf and that's it. So I don't use those closed kind of systems and all of my plants live in room humidity which can sometimes be a challenge during the winter. Now I personally do not use humidifiers because I, I think they are so freaking expensive. You have to use distilled water. It takes up a lot of water. You have to constantly go to the store and buy new water bottles. It creates a lot of plastic because you have a lot of plastic from the water bottles. Of course, you could use like, I don't know, probably reverse osmosis water or something like that. Don't have the system for that. Again, pretty expensive. I would not use tap water. Just, I would not, okay? It will leave a nasty gray film over every surface in your house, over everything. It can harm your electronics. It's not good for your lungs. So please just do not use tap water with humidifiers. I know people, some people say that it's fine and it could probably be fine, but I just, I personally don't want to take the risk. My humidity during the winter time ranges from 40 to 50%. And honestly, my plants just deal with it. Now, one thing that I do like to do is actually group them and huddle them all together. And I feel like that really creates like a little micro system. And I feel like that alone, just grouping a bunch of plants together does keep up the humidity a little bit higher. I would say avoid misting completely. It does nothing uh, but cause problems. You can cause some serious fungal issues if you mist constantly, especially during the winter because we're going back to the point of wet and cold is deadly. I feel like my plants personally don't suffer too much from the lack of humidity. Now, of course, there are exceptions. I really don't have a lot of humidity loving divas in particular because I know that I don't have the best humidity in my space year round. So I try to avoid buying plants that need high humidity because I know I can't provide it to them and I don't wanna provide it to them and that is Fine. So if you don't have a lot of humidity in your room, try not to stress about it too much. The plants will adapt. They might go through a bit of a hard time. Overall, I wouldn't worry too much about humidity. Light and watering is definitely more important than humidity, in my opinion. Humidity just helps them grow a little bit faster and more vigorous, but it is not a necessity, unlike lighting and water, which is a necessity for the plant. Now related to humidity comes a topic we do not like talking about, and it is pests. And with warmth and with dry air in particular, spider mites freaking love it. They love the dry air, they love the warmth, and during the winter months, they really like to attack your plants. So I would be extra careful and watch out for those little buggers 
check your leaves often, spray them down, try to avoid getting any big infestations because if you catch it early and you deal with it early, you don't have to worry. Of course, in order to make our houses livable, we need to heat them because we cannot live in cold houses. And it doesn't matter which kind of heating system you use, that heating system will really dry out your house. And it will also maybe create some draft. So what I would recommend is to pull away, to pull away your plants from any drafty areas. That goes for drafty windows, drafty heating systems, any kind of draft, whether it's cold or hot, should be avoided. Plants love air circulation, but they don't love when they're getting blasted by heat or cold. Now, on the controversial topic of should you repot during winter, should you stop fertilizing during winter, I say no. I say no to both. If your plant is growing and you see that the plant is root bound, repot it. If your plant is growing and pushing out new growth, I say fertilize it. Now, of course, if you see that a plant is not growing, it's completely dormant, not doing anything for months, then you can lower the amount of fertilizing, repotting and all else. But if you have plants under grow lights in good condition year round, most likely they will continue to grow and they will need the continued care. They will need the nutrients. They will need the repotting. Don't be afraid to feed and repot during the winter times. And my final biggest tip is to just Embrace the dormancy. It's to appreciate the period of rest for your plants. They also need a period of rest. Let it survive the winter and then once spring comes and it kickstarts into action, you will be rewarded with such great growth and it will feel amazing. If your plants grew the same amount throughout the entire season and throughout the entire year, it would be boring, wouldn't it? If every single plant was always growing and never struggling and never having any setbacks, I think this hobby would be pretty boring. So I try to embrace the setbacks. I try to not worry about it too much. I try to take care of my plants whenever I can and just appreciate them because having them inside our houses is such a wonderful thing. And of course, we cannot have the same conditions that they have in their natural habitat. All we can do is try to mimic it and hope for the best, really. One last point is just be kind to yourself. This is a hard season, both for our plants, but also for ourselves. Seasonal depression is a real thing. And I think the lack of sunlight not only affects our plants, but also us. So first and foremost, be kind to yourself and then take care of your plants and everything will be good. In a few months, we will come out of this winter blues and we will enter spring and everything will start to flourish. Let me know in the comment section below what are some challenges that you particularly are facing in the winter time. And if you have any other tips and tricks that I have not mentioned, please leave those in the comment section below because I would love to hear about them and I'm sure others would too. Have a super freaking amazing day and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.